Hello everybody and welcome back to Gaming on Caffeine. My name is Isaac and we're back doing something a little bit different for my channel. This is a mod spotlight slash first look at a new mod that caught my eye on the Minecraft forums today. This is the Advanced Generators mod for Minecraft 1.7.10. There will be a link down in the description if you want to go play around with it for yourself. But without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? So this mod isn't a massive mod. As you can see from any eye over here, we have about probably 10 to 15 items uh, over on the right here. And I'm going to go through the machine blocks first. We have a, a fluid intake valve. I'll put the recipes up on screen for you if you so wish to use those. We have a turbine, a fuel tank, a power capacitor, a turbine controller, a pneumatic power emitter, a flux generator, an ME emitter, LV emitter, and HV emitter, and then a bunch of other little more items that are used to make all of those blocks that we just went through. Uh, I'm not going to go through those. You can look them up at any eye. It's like on every mod pack now, so you shouldn't have to anyway and uh, need the recipes and such like that. So... What does this thing do? This is a fully modular, fully expandable, fully compatible power generation system, which is pretty flipping cool. Fully modular, I mean you can have as many blocks as you want, as little blocks as you want. Expandable, you can produce as little power as you want. You can produce thousands of redstone flux per tick at once. And fully compatible, it works for redstone flux, Minecraft jewels, and EU. It works for most of the the power storage and generation systems throughout most of the mostly used mods in, in the Minecraft mod community. So how does it work? Well, the first thing you're going to need is this guy here, the turbine controller. This is sort of the main uh, function of the uh, the multi-block, and you can put this down any way you like, and you get a nice little uh, interface if we have a look, but we can't look because we need at least one turbine. So we're going to get a turbine controller and put down next to it a turbine. And this is basically the very basics. You can't really make any power yet because we don't have any way to input fuel, but this is the basics, and we get this nice little interface here. So this is just a nice little graphic. This is where your fuel will be. And at the bottom here, we have connected turbines. You can have up to 50 connected turbines at once. Each turbine you add will produce an additional 10 Minecraft joules per tick. You can have, uh, it tells you here the peak production, so how much it can produce at once. You can see here we only have one, one turbine, so it'll produce 10. Uh, that is how much it can produce at max. Uh, you, might, you might be throttled maybe by the fuel you're using or something else along those lines. Uh, this is how much fuel consumption it's using, and this is how much it is producing. And then these over here, outputs that we will get to in a second. So we have ourselves a turbine controller and a turbine. What else can we add? We can add ourselves a fluid intake valve. This is so that we can add the fuels that we want to power the turbines with to the turbine controller and actually start to power the stuff. Uh, currently the fuels that work are fuel from Buildcraft, <laughs> who'd have guessed it. Uh, we have ethanol from Forestry, rocket fuel and fire water from Ender.io and liquefacted coal from Thermal Expansion. However, the mod author does say that other fuels should work in the future. This is a very early build of this mod by the way, version 0 0.9.0, so not even a full 1.0.0 uh, build yet, so things may change, things may get better, and uh, more stuff may be incorporated, but for now, we're going to have a look at what we've got. So, those are the, the fuels that can be added. Uh, on the uh, on the game that I'm running right now, I have Buildcraft, Thermal Expansion, and Industrial Craft 2, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab myself some liquefacted coal, like so, and I'm also going to grab a tank so that I can put the stuff in. I'm going to grab a creative tank just for ease sake. So we can put a creative tank on here. You could also have fluid hooks going to here. You could have build craft pipes going to here. Uh, you could have really any sort of pipes going into the fluid intake valve to carry your stuff along. Put some liquefacted coal in there, and then we're going to use a crescent hammer to, uh, to make this an output. And now if we look at here, you can see this is lit up and things are working because this is now full of liquefacted coal and power is being generated. Now, by default, this thing could hold an internal buffer of 10,000 Minecraft jewels. However, if you wanted to up that because, say, you didn't want to have, like, um, maybe an MFE, an MFSU, some sort of thermal expansion energy cell to store all your stuff, and you just wanted to store everything inside this, inside your power generation, then what you can do is you can add some power capacitors. If we were to add a power capacitor to this, you will see it now holds five. 510,000 Minecraft jewels, which is pretty insane. So every single one of these adds an extra 500,000 Minecraft jewels to the capacity of the turbine generator controller. That's pretty cool. And you can add as many of these as you want, up to, I believe, 10, which um, would give you like 5 million extra um, Minecraft jewels, which is pretty insane. So you can add up to 10 more of these. It's not it's not like infinitely expandable. I don't know if it will be in the full release, but for now you can add up to 50 turbine controllers uh, and up to 10 power capacitors. And the next thing on the list is the fuel. At the minute we can only hold 1,000 millibuckets of fuel, which is only one bucket of fuel. However, earlier when we went through the blocks, you may have noticed we have a fuel tank, which we can add, and this will bump it up 
to 1 million 10,000 Minecraft jewels, which is, again, pretty insane. You can add, again, up to 10 of these fuel tanks to, to hold as much fuel as you'd like to hold in this thing. And then we also have a few more things that we can look at. Uh, we have the, we've done the turbines. We can add more of these, by the way. These each add 10 redstone flux per tick to the production. You can see there the peak now is 50 Minecraft jewels per tick. So with that, we can get rid of these guys. Those are basically all the things that we can add that are going to change the way this thing works. Change the way how much it can hold, how much power it's going to produce, and stuff like that. And the next set of things here, I should probably grab an MV emitter as well. These are basically the ways to output the power. Because like I said, it's fully modular. It can be used on most of the um, the current power systems in modern Minecraft. Those being Redstone Flux, Minecraft Jewels, and EU. But how do we do that? So for... for the normal stuff for Minecraft Jaws, as you can see, by default, it's all in Minecraft Jaws. So for Minecraft Jaws itself, you can just get a pneumatic power emitter like so. You can put this anywhere, by the way. This The shape will just bend to however you want to make it. I could build stuff around this creative tank and just leave the tank in the middle and it would be work fine as a multi-block. There is no specific structure to how it has to be made, which I think is pretty awesome. So now we've got this pneumatic power emitter. We could grab, say, some Buildcraft pipes. Uh, let's just get like some kinesis pipes. Uh, we'll grab like I don't know wooden and some gold, and we could just attach these. Uh, we need wooden first. We can just attach these like this, and you can see it's going to output. Now, if we look into here, you can see it's going to output 33 Minecraft jewels per tick. The reason it's going to output 33 Minecraft jewels per tick is because this guy here can only take 32 Minecraft jewels per tick. But that's going to carry along. And also, another cool feature of this is that now you'll see we have this thing here. This is where the outputs are. And with this guy, you can have always on. You can have redstone on enabled, you can have redstone on disabled, and you can have just straight up disabled. This is so you have a little bit more control, kind of like with the thermal expansion machines when you want to have uh, redstone enabled, disabled, strong, weak, stuff like that. So basically, if you wanted to, you could have it so that um, it only turns on, it only starts emitting power when you give it a redstone signal, which is pretty cool. You could set up some systems so it only starts using stuff up and only starts sending power out when you, uh, when you need it to. Uh, another cool thing is when it's not actually requiring power, when it doesn't have anywhere to go, it won't actually use any power up. So you can see we're actually still gaining power. It's not going to use it up. And once this tank's full, it's not going to keep burning up the liquefacted coal. It only burns up as much as it needs and doesn't keep going once the power is out, which is pretty awesome. So that's how you get Buildcraft power. We could put, say, a quarry down here now and things will be dandy we could just do this and it would start to build stuff up which we're not going to do because that's going to break everything we've done i'm not too sure whether you can just do this does that work no it doesn't you have to have some sort of pipes but that's how you connect it to buildcraft stuff and how you get the minecraft jewels out of it now next on the list is the new is this guy here the flux generator now as of recording this video um the team the the cough car team the people who make thermal expansion haven't yet released their um conduits for 1.7.10 so we don't actually have any leadstone energy conduits hardened energy conduits anything like that so i'm not sure how this is going to work i would assume that because conduits can convert between minecraft jewels and redstone flux that you would be able to put a, a conduit straight onto here and then put a leadstone energy cell or an, some form of energy cell on the other side to take that power out i would assume that's how it works but as i say i have not tested it so for now what we're gonna have to do is use this guy here the flux generator which allows us to output using redstone flux so if we were to grab ourselves an energy cell, I'm going to grab two just to show you something here. Let's grab, say, a redstone energy cell and a hardened, uh, a redstone energy cell. So we can put this guy down here. We can make uh, the back by default is already an input. So you'll see we are gaining power pretty quickly, which is nice. So we're going to gain power, and you can see it's at 80 redstone flux per tick. Now, if we were to add this guy down here, it's going to take up 2,000 redstone flux per tick. So the, the, the turbine itself automatically adjusts how much power it gives out um, based on how much power is needed out and about. So if you had like a bunch of conduits coming off this and we could have, say, I don't know, we could have a kinesis pipe coming off this as well uh, using the other section. Let's grab a wooden kinesis pipe. We could have this coming off here. Uh, and using power also and we could have all sorts of stuff all sorts of different systems running off of this one turbine power generator which is pretty freaking awesome and the final uh, last but not least is the uh, hv emitter lv emitter and mv emitter which for anyone who is familiar at all with industrial craft 2 will know that these are the different forms of power for industrial craft so we have an lv emitter a HV emitter, which put that on the end, and an MV emitter, high voltage, medium voltage, and low voltage. And this is basically for your machines because certain machines can only take so much uh, EU and then you don't want things to blow up. So if we had a look in here, let's go ourselves some, say, copper cable. And we were to put that on here. I 
don't know if it's going to output straight away. Let's have a look. Uh, it's not. You see, the Minecraft drawers in the EU are not giving any power out because they have nowhere to go. But let's say we grab ourselves an MFSU, like so, and stick this on the end here. You'll see that this thing should start outputting 128-ish EU per tick because that's how much the LV emitter can give out. That's how much low voltage machines can take and how much the copper cable can trans transfer at once. Now, if we were to add this guy to the mix, this thing should start to output from the yellow side um, 125 as well. But that's because we're, we're now limited by the copper cable. If we were to, say, add some glass fiber cable to the mix there and do a similar sort of thing like so, we would see a much higher output there. Yeah, I think that might be because that's connected. Uh, still 125. I'm not too sure if uh, that's just MV output right there. If we added something like this. Oh, it's because we've got flipping... Let's, um, that's an MFSU. This should be able to um, output, give and take, quite a lot of power. If I was to put this down on its own again... Still 125 EU per tick. Mm hmm. I'm pretty sure this should be giving a bit more than 125 EU per tick. Not too sure what's going on with that. Let's get some um, like some high voltage cable going on here. If we get some uh, some of this, how much can this thing take? This thing should be able to take up to 8,000. So that should be working fine. The MFSU should as well. But for some reason, it's limiting itself at 125 EU per tick. This is actually now probably due to the fact that we only have one turbine on this thing. If we were to now add some more turbines, this thing would probably start to output some more. Am I right? I am, yeah. So basically what was limiting us there was the amount of power we could produce. We could only produce 90 Minecraft fuels per tick, which apparently equates to 225 EU per tick. So it will adjust how much it outputs, but only to the amount of power that you have. If you've got a bunch of, if you've only got like one turbine, it's, it's still going to cap itself there. Uh, but as you can see, it's going up. And if I added just more and more of these turbines, it would, of course, fill itself up all the way up until we had, I think we're actually running out of fuel right now, are we not? Uh, uh, no, we're full on fuel. It's because we got creative fuel. But yeah, we can keep adding those up to 50 of these turbines. So we can add a ton of these turbines like so. And when we've got it full or when we got it up to the 2000 EU per tick mark, it would be outputting the full 2000 EU per tick and filling this guy up pretty cool. So yeah, that is the advanced generators mod for Minecraft 1.7. Um, in some cases, pretty unexceptional. It doesn't add that many things. And it kind of does what a lot of other things do already. But what makes it really cool for me, at least, is the fact that it does pretty much everything everything in one you can output to every single form uh, i say every single form that's probably just me being uh, close-minded to all the other forms that are not the mainstream ones but we have redstone flux eu and minecraft jewels all coming off of one power system we could make like one power cube set it up somewhere and then just pull all of our power off of that and we could put all of our fuel into that do you know what I mean? we could put all our build craft fuel all our um uh, thermal expansion fuel, and I don't think there's any EU fuel, but we could put all of that fuel into one machine and have it run off of all the same fuel and output to everything, which I think is pretty flipping awesome. And and that's why I also think this pack this is probably going to end up in quite a lot of, uh, of mod packs in the future because it's kind of cool. It's it's really convenient for, for powering everything, which is pretty flipping awesome. So yeah, with that guys, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like and tell me in the comment section what you think of the uh, the advanced generators mod for 1.7.10. And I will see you guys next time. Bye bye.